Arya Stark, Arya Stark, she'll jump on you in the dark. Spins a stick, any size, kills night kings just like flies. Look out, here comes Arya Stark. Hey guys, welcome to Muncher Movies. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can keep up with the madness that has been this week. First Endgame, and now Game of Thrones, Season 8, Episode 3, The Long Night. Or as most of us called it before the episode came out, The Battle of Winterfell, which in my personal opinion is a much better name for the episode because The Long Night that has been built up for the past 10,000 years only lasted 2 hours. Now, as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm not the happiest camper about what happens at the end. Doesn't mean that the episode wasn't enjoyable or an absolute achievement in creativity, filmmaking and serialized television. It's just that when one is as emotionally invested into Game of Thrones as I'm sure so many of us are, a subversion of expectations like Arya spider-manning up behind the Night King can be pretty irritating. Let's get into why. I'm here to tell you why Arya killing the Night King was stupid. I'll break it down like this. Number 1. The Night King dying is stupid. Number 2. Arya being the one to kill the Night King is stupid. Number 3. Arya being able to kill the Night King at all is stupid. And number 4. Us being able to see it coming is stupid. This of course is just my opinion so if you disagree with me, please tell me why in the comments. I'd love to hear it and be convinced over to the other side. And if you have anything to add to my reasoning, I'd love to hear that too. While you're here, don't forget to check out other Game of Thrones content we have on the channel. Avengers Endgame videos, MCU videos, film feuds, plenty of good stuff. If you're a movie lover or a TV show lover, you're gonna love it, so don't forget to check that out. Let's begin. Number 1. The Night King dying is so weak and stupid. There's no other way to say it. The Night King got snoked. You know how by the midpoint of The Last Jedi, Snoke had been established as the perfect Star Wars big baddie? Like the Emperor in the originals and the prequels, he would be very menacing with limited screen time and his powers were established as mind-boggling. He could use the force from millions of miles away, like when he did that on Hux. Cut to the throne room, he's in the middle of his evil guy speech, the hero of the story, Rey, is experiencing her whole all is lost moment, Kylo Ren is next to her and whoosh! He gets cut in half by the lightsaber. It's a cool moment, I'll grant you that, but we were all left wondering, is this it? We got so much build-up, so much theorizing on backstories, connections to main characters, connections to previous villains, and the expectation of all kinds of payoff through two movies, and we end up with an abrupt ending to this character, Snoke, all in the name of subverted expectations. The Night King build-up was 10 times that of Snoke. Game of Thrones the show opens with the shot of a white of the others as they call them in the book. The books are called A Song of Ice and Fire and the threat beyond the wall, the great war that's coming, the long night, that's what John keeps insisting people playing the Game of Thrones should actually be focused on. The long night lasts 2 hours and nothing between the Night King and Bran is explored at all. His creation scene we were given at the Weirwood Tree through one of Bran's flashbacks was given to us for no reason it seems and all the Night King's mystery dies with him and his undead army. Big whoop. What was the Night King's deal anyway? Chill for 10,000 years just to attack Winterfell and fail miserably? Didn't his green side let him see this was gonna happen like Bran's green side did? His green side let him not kill Jon beyond the wall in season 7 because he knew Danny was coming to rescue him with the dragon so he could take the dragon. Turns out the Night King is just a hurdle in the real Game of Thrones and even though he did a lot of damage, R.I.P. the entire Dothraki horde. He wasn't even the end boss. He's like the little Bowser the game fakes you with and all he does is give you a key so you can now go in and fight the big Bowser which in this case is gonna be Cersei. I know I'm not the only one disappointed here. I've read all the YouTube comments, I've seen people's theories go bust and I have to say after so much build up, yes we get an 80 minute episode and yes the episode was spectacular. But come on, you can't do a disservice to the story and the biggest villain you've established throughout the story like this. Number 2. Arya being the one to kill the Night King is stupid. Let's cut right to it. Arya kills the big bad wolf, the Night King, who she has not only never interacted with in the whole series, but this was the first time she sees him even in the episode itself. 
Hey, good thing she didn't go for a white walker by mistake. They look kind of similar in the dark, right? And what does this mean for the Azor High prophecy, by the way? We did a video on this you guys should check out, but it's still up for grabs. Is Arya Azor High? Jon, who had multiple interactions with the Night King, he was like his nemesis, basically. He got owned by the Night King, he got toyed with. Even in this episode, he's so close to getting a face-off, yet so far. So in the end, what's his plan anyway? He stands up to face Ice Viserion because... Why, again? For the slow-mo drama moment as the music builds up? And you know what? I get all the foreshadowing that has led to Arya being the one. Not just the clear nudge that Melisandre repeating in this episode what she said to Arya in Season 3, brown eyes, green eyes, blue eyes, but also that Arya is very well trained, she has a Valerian steel cat spot dagger on her, which for some reason she didn't show to Jon in Episode 1, and now I understand why it's for this reveal. I, I get all that. I just hate it when characters in a show get rewarded for stupidity instead of actually solving their problems with ingenuity and cleverness. And in a show like Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, where there were always consequences for stupidity, like trusting Littlefinger would lead to Ned dying, breaking promises of marriage would lead to the Red Wedding. In a show like this, it's so sad to resolve an eight-year-old storyline with an Arya ex machina. In the episode breakdown after that HBO releases, I watched Dan and Dave talk about how they knew for three years that Arya is going to be the one to kill the Night King. But it seemed like the reason to do this was because she could fight and that it would be a surprise. Okay, subverted expectations don't always exceed expectations. Just ask Ryan Johnson. Number 3. Arya being able to kill the Night King at all is stupid. Again, I appreciate how well foreshadowed this is. Her reaction time when she stabs that white in the library with the knife in the throat, that's really cool. That's like a 0.1 millisecond ninja reaction. Her sneaking up on John in episode 1 of the season, great. Her sparring with Brienne in season 7 and using the same dagger drop move that she uses to kill the Night King. I get it, she is a ninja, right? But this goes beyond ninja. In this final moment, she's like a ninja if a ninja could also jump like Spider-Man and he had Doctor Strange open up a big portal right behind the Night King wherever he needed to jump onto his enemies. And you know, just like Thanos catches Spider-Man in Infinity War, the Night King is no less a ninja himself. He senses her coming and is quick enough to catch her by the throat and by the knife hand. Then she does the dagger drop to the right hand. And didn't Rey already do this in Snoke's throne room? I know I keep going back to The Last Jedi, which is not a good sign for this episode or this moment. The level up in Arya's abilities that we have been getting rival those of like Captain America in the MCU. You know how in First Avenger he starts off as just a really jacked dude who can run really fast? And then in future movies he starts falling from 30 story buildings without a scratch and then he can take on Thanos for a few seconds one on one at the end in Wakanda and eventually ends up doing that thing in Endgame that I don't want to spoil just in case but you know he levels up. Well Arya during her training, she's been blinded, she's been unblinded, she can do some parkour, she can beat the waif in the darkness. But here, she's like a master of all weapons and all water dancing and is a white killing machine. I, I, I thought the faceless men's biggest strength was the faceless thing, like the fact that they could take faces. And you know what, that's what would have been actually really cool, is if she actually used that skill, the main skill she learned. Imagine if we saw her killing a white walker. And you know, we see it as a big achievement if she does that, right, within the battle. It would be a good fake out of the Melisandre blue eyes prophecy. And then boom, she somehow peels the face off the White Walker. And when the Night King is standing surrounded by the White Walkers, peels off the White Walker face that she's wearing and then attacks the Night King. Now that would be clever. It would be surprising. It would be badass. But most importantly, it would be consistent. Nah, here she just jumps and dagger drops and stabs him. I guess it's a pretty exciting week for Arya at least. First, she seduces Gendry and then she just, you know, offhandedly saves the planet. How exciting. Also, this is a nitpick for sure, but if you listen carefully to the episode, which, let's face it guys, we, we're all going to rewatch it, right? So, on the second rewatch, I realized that to increase the dramatic effect, right before Arya reaches the Night King in her jump, in her Spider-Man jump, she's apparently screaming. Right before. Weird choice then, Ninja Girl. Maybe save it for after you're done stabbing him, after you're done sneaking up on him. 
Plus, the Night King is fast enough to catch her midair, right? So, good thing he made the choice to hold her by the throat and hand. What if he just like roundhouse kicked her like Bruce Lee or one of my favorite Tekken 3 characters, Horang? I, it's just it's just so convenient, guys. It's like, you know, when the giant chooses to hold Liana Mormont in the episode, he holds her up like King Kong holds Naomi Watts and just admires her for a little bit. I mean, he's cracking her ribs, but in the meanwhile, he's just holding her closer and closer so she can just stab him in the eye with dragon glass and get a heroic ending. They'd already done that once in the episode. Why repeat it? Okay, finally, number four, us being able to see it coming is stupid. This is where I'm really curious if you guys agree with me, so please let me know. Towards the end of the episode, Bran and the Night King are having like this romantic face-off. I, I think they were like telepathically communicating or something. Jon is being blocked by the dragon, Skyrim style. And he gets so frustrated, he decides to commit suicide by ice dragon. Like he just stands up and is just ready to get burned. Jorah is almost dead, which would leave Danny out in the open, implying that she's gonna die soon. Jaime, Brienne and Podrick are about to lose. Sam is just weeping. So this is it, right? This is the all is lost moment. Everything is slow motion, the music is really intense, and, and it's great by the way, the music is great, but it's all just creating that dramatic tension that, that we know, we, we've experienced this before, right? So my problem is that most of us watch enough TV, enough films, enough content in general to know that the all is lost moment usually means that all is not lost. Even in Game of Thrones proper, which is I guess season one through five, surprise deaths like the Red Wedding used to come out of nowhere. Not with this kind of slow motion music dramatic buildup. Even though they're distracting you enough, right? So you're not thinking about Arya, like where is Arya, the only major character not being focused on in that slow motion. Arya who went hunting for blue eyes to kill at some point. Do I really think that Jon, Bran, Danny, Brienne and Jaime are just gonna die in that moment? I don't and you don't and the showrunners know this. It actually led me to being really distracted trying to figure out who is going to come to the rescue because I know someone had to. And to be fair, I was just about immersed enough that it still came as a surprise. But I actually saw other people's reaction videos where people were straight up like, um, where's Arya? I guess Arya's on her way. So D&D, Dan and Dave, we love you, but can you give your massive audience the credit you used to give when you were following George R.R. Martin's books? I want every episode of this show to be unthinkably good. I love this show. And I don't want it to be good just because it has the highest budget or is just about the most well-executed version of whatever genre it's mimicking in that moment. And Dan and Dave, if you're somehow listening right now, which I know you aren't, but I hope you are, good luck for the remaining episodes, guys. I have no idea what it's like to wrap up the biggest TV show of the decade, but I believe in you guys, okay? So, Arya now has the highest kill count anyone will ever have in Westeros. She's actually kind of committed this weird genocide, if you think about it, but obviously it shouldn't count as a genocide because they were all dead anyway. And also, if you go by Gimli rules, that still only counts as one, Arya. But good job, Ninja Girl. Good job. Thanks for taking care of the long night in a matter of seconds. Let's move on to the actual game of the Game of Thrones. Anyway, guys, that about wraps up my rant. I'm still fresh from this amazing episode, so there's a lot to absorb. Part of being a passionate fan is passionately disliking things in the show, right? And I'm very open to my mind being changed. So please, let me know in the comments what you think. And you know what? At least one good thing will come out of this is all the no one killing the Night King memes. So look forward to that, I guess. And until next time, bye-bye.